Hey guys, Travis here. Um, I finally wanted to go ahead and do the review of this car. So this is the 2016 Subaru WRX STI Limited. I just want to start off by saying that I absolutely love this car. It is a complete blast to drive. Um, I daily drive this car and I have no regrets about it whatsoever. I think the the exterior looks fantastic. I love the interior. It's a huge upgrade over the previous models for sure. And I'm really happy with my decision uh, to buy this car. The first thing I'll jump into is the, the exterior styling. So it's got a couple of features that I really liked. I would say probably the first thing that, that drew my attention to the WRX was the functional hood scoop. Uh, you see a lot of cars that have hood scoops, but they don't function. They've just got sort of like a black piece of plastic in there and it doesn't really do anything. In my opinion, just adds drag to the car. Um, and I mean, of course, this one does too on some level because it's you know, pulling air in there and then it's getting put you know, directly into the intercooler, but that's, at least it's accomplishing something. So, um, but I really like the way that it looks. It, it doesn't look like an afterthought as, as they do on some vehicles. I'm really I'm pleased with the lines. Um, I really like the way that the the headlights look on this car, particularly the uh, the rings around the headlights, really look sharp. Um, and I've actually taken a couple of shots at night of those with just those on, and it's it's really really cool looking. I think this car has the HIDs in it. It comes with them. Um, it's got. Uh, it's got a, a, a bunch of really cool features that, that on a lot of cars you'd have to add afterwards and you just don't on this car because it just comes with it. Um, I, I love the, the exterior lines of this car, as I said before. It's got some really aggressive lines, especially up around the hood area. And it just, it's a really sharp looking car overall, I think. This particular car comes with the 18 inch wheels. So, I know that the 2015s came with 17s, and I think that it's just, those were just a little bit too small, I thought, and I think the 18s look just perfect, and then I realize it's not that large of a difference between tires, but I think it really helps with the appearance of the, uh, with the appearance of the car. The interior is a really nice place to be in this car. Um, it's got soft touch materials everywhere. It's got uh, this, these nice door panels, which are soft touch. Um, you know, the armrests are soft touch. This particular car has the um, extension, the armrest extension, uh, which is really nice. That's not a stock thing; it's an extra. But I highly recommend it to anybody who who's thinking of getting a WRX or an STI because uh, that's that's one thing that I think that by default they did kind of wrong was. Unless you've got really long arms, you're not going to be able to reach all the way down there without the extension. So, I think the extension really adds a lot to the comfort factor while you're driving the car. Other things about the, the interior that I really love, of course, this is the, the Limited, so it comes with full leather seats, which I absolutely love. These are super comfortable leather seats, and I don't find myself getting overly hot in them. I don't find myself saying, oh, well, I wish I got a club because the leather's too hot. I don't know what it is about the, the leather that they use, but it's not that type of leather where you sit on it for five minutes and you're just, you're soaking through clothes because you're, you're hot. Um, so I really like the quality of the, the materials that they used. Uh, speaking of the seats, uh, these seats have really nice bolstering along the side, so it really kind of hugs you and, and keeps you in place and keeps you from sliding around too much. And I really like that. Uh, I really like the seats in this car a lot. They're very comfortable. They hold you in place. They do their job very well. I have no complaints about them whatsoever. So I don't feel the need to upgrade them or, or do anything of the sort with them. I'm, I'm very happy with the stock seats as they are. The other thing that they have changed in the 2016 model is this infotainment system. Um, this whole infotainment system has been redone. Um, so one large complaint about uh, the previous versions of this car was that the the basically the stereo head unit was sorely out of date, and I kind of agree with that. Uh, it was something I was willing to look past when I was looking at 2015s, 
uh, because I was just like, well, I could just throw another another head unit in there. But when I looked at the 2016 and saw how awesome this system is, it's fantastic that it comes stock. Uh, you know, it's got satellite radio, Bluetooth capability, which the Bluetooth on this works great. You know, it it uh, it does a great job streaming the audio. Um, the, the call quality is really good. I haven't really had too many people complaining about, um, you know, too much road noise in the background, unless I'm going down the highway, then it's a little bit, it's not so great, but just driving around town, it's, it's fantastic in terms of call quality, call quality and things like that. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, it, it uh, it's, it's a very nice, easy to look at display. Um, this also has the navigation on it, which I, I just recently started using. Uh, I've never had a, a vehicle with navigation before, so it took me a while to break the habit of using my phone for it all the time um, but yeah the, the navigation is actually quite nice to use because um, I mean in, in a car where you don't have to worry about shifting all the time and stuff like that you can kind of hold your phone and look at it but when you're driving a manual you can't really hold your phone and shift at the same time it doesn't really work out so well I mean you can but um, it, it really doesn't work out that well so it's it's really nice to have something built into the car that can handle that navigation portion for you. Um, a couple of other things. The rear seat space in this is quite plentiful, uh, especially for, for a sports car. You know, usually you just have to write the back seats off as completely useless because you can't fit anybody in there if they have legs. So I have the seat adjusted as, it, you know, as if I'm sitting in, in the driver's seat. And then I go and sit in the back seat, so I'm basically sitting behind myself. If I do that, I've still got a good three inches of, of knee clearance. And I'm 5'10", so I think that's pretty good. Uh, I haven't really had anybody complain about, you know, lack of space in this car. So that's definitely something that is a huge plus. One other thing um, that's really nice about this car is the amount of trunk space. Uh, it's got quite a generous trunk on it, actually, or a boot, as some may call it. Um, I was actually kind of surprised how, how large uh, the trunk is. I mean, it's not huge, but for, again, for a sports car, it's actually quite a practical sized trunk. I'm very happy with it. Um, one other thing that I love that I never actually thought that I would own in a car um, is the moonroof or sunroof, as some may call it. Um, that's a feature that I... I wasn't really specifically looking for, but it just comes on the uh, on the, uh, the limited, and I find that I use it a lot more than I think that I would have. Namely, because you know when you when you get into a hot car that's been sitting in a parking lot for several hours, it really helps dissipate the heat quick. You just open that up and then open the windows, and all the heat just goes up and out in a matter of seconds. So it really helps with that. Um, it's also really nice when you're driving along the beach to just have that open. Or, you know, if you're just cruising along at night, even, and, you know, you just you just have that open, and it's, it's really, it's fantastic. Boy, traffic is really heavy this morning. Okay, so on to some of the more um, performance-oriented things with this car. So this has the 2.5 liter uh, turbocharged boxer engine. For those of you that are not familiar with, a, with what a boxer engine is, a boxer engine is basically the pistons are sideways in it and they move in and out away towards and away from the center so they basically move this way so you've got your you know your v6 or your your v8 where they kind of move at an angle like this and then you've got your um you've got your your inlines where all the the pistons are typically straight up front to back or side to side if the engine's mounted sideways and then in, in a boxer engine, um, they go side to side. And Subaru does that because uh, they feel that it gives the ride a, uh, a better balance. Uh, for one thing, the engine can sit lower because it doesn't, there's not as much height to it. So it gives a better uh, center of gravity, uh, a lower center of gravity rather. The other thing is they, they say that since it's balanced better, you don't get as many vibrations. And I think that's partially true. Uh, I know I've, I've certainly driven some uh, some V8s and some some V6s and even some some just regular four cylinders that seem like they vibrate a lot. 
uh, especially at lower RPMs. And this car really doesn't seem to, to vibrate that much. You don't get you don't get fatigue from all the vibrations in the car as you, as you do in some vehicles. So I think I think they're definitely um, spot on about that. Whoa. It's always nice to see a dump truck ahead of you uh, squealing its tires to a stop. So the engine puts out uh, 305 horsepower. And, you know, some people have complained that, oh, that's not really a lot. You know, there's a lot of um, sedans and things that, that have that kind of horsepower nowadays. And, and that may be true, but this doesn't at all feel like you're driving a sedan. There's a number of reasons it doesn't feel like a sedan. For one thing, uh, it's definitely got a more sporty ride to it, so the, the suspension is much tighter. That, in conjunction with the all-wheel drive system that it has, uh, it it corners really, really, really well. I've driven a lot of different sedans over the years, and let's just face it, most sedans handle like absolute rubbish. You know, they, they can't take corners fast at all. Most of them nowadays tend to understeer because they're all front-wheel drive. And, of course, with an all-wheel drive, you will get a little bit of understeer um, from time to time but it's not anywhere near as as bad as you know what a front wheel drive car would give you at least in my experience that being said you know i i think that this car's handling and its and its power are correct for the car would i like to see a little bit more horsepower yeah eventually but i'm happy with it as is for now um i've mentioned this in a in a previous video as well but this is actually the first vehicle that I've owned that has a manual transmission in it, so I didn't want something with 600 horsepower to be learning in that end. That just didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me to do that. Wow, traffic is really, really heavy on here today. What is going on? Cruiser lights up here. And an ambulance. And block lanes. That's nice. And there's tire parts all over the road. That's not good. Alright, sorry about that. So anyways, I feel that this car has enough power. It's got power to the point where I've actually managed to spin out all four tires on it. Um, you know, taking off a little bit over zealously. So, you know, I don't feel that the car is lacking in power whatsoever. One thing that I do love um, about this car, and it's the same thing that's attracted me to Subarus for years, is the unequal length headers. Now, I know that there's a slight performance hit in having unequal length headers. And I'm okay with that because I absolutely love the sound of the, the super rumble, you know, it's, or, or the burble as some people call it. I, I love the sound of that, that engine. I always have loved the sound of it. And one thing that, you know, that, that was one thing that bummed me out a little bit about the, uh, the, you know, the base WRX, which I still think is a fantastic car. That car now has the, the FA engine in it versus the EJ engine, and it's a new engine, it's more fuel efficient than, than the EJ, but it doesn't have that same sound, and that's really important to me in a performance car. And the other thing that, that sort of, I guess, concerns me a little bit about it too is the EJ engine has been around for a very long time, and a lot of people, that's, been, that's sort of been a bone of contention for a lot of people too. But the way I look at it is, it's well known where all the, the weaknesses of the EJ engine are. The FA has only been out for a couple of years now, so they don't completely know what all weak spots are yet. Um, it doesn't have as much aftermarket stuff available or, or, um, or even, you know, knowledge of, of its weak points. There's some stuff that's known out there, but not a whole lot yet, and, and I feel like there's a bigger knowledge base about the EJ engine just because it's been around for for so much longer. So, at least with the EJ, I know exactly what I'm getting. With the FA, I don't as much. Um, that being said, when I test drove a base WRX, I thought that it handled really well. I had no complaints about the power there either. It really just came down to the, the exhaust sound to me and, and the fact that I know more about the EJ motor than I do about the FA. The exhaust note on this car is, is absolutely fantastic. Speaking of exhaust note, though, one thing that uh, has been a common complaint is this car has a lot of road noise inside, and that's definitely true. Um, it's not it's not a quiet place to be, that's for sure. But I don't think it's so loud that it's obnoxious or that it's that it gives you fatigue. Like I said, I daily drive the 370, 
Nope, that's a 350 actually. That's a nice 350. We've done some work for that. So yeah, the, the interior um, noise level of this is, I don't have a, a decibel radio or anything like that. If I did, it would probably be an app in my phone if I'm honest, and it wouldn't be that, that accurate. But it's not a quiet place to be. But then again, if you're buying a sports car, it's not supposed to be. One thing that's always bothered me is when people complain about sports cars not having luxurious interiors. Now, I really like the, the, the interior upgrades that they've done with this car. So it is a very comfortable place to be. Subaru's done a fantastic job with the interior of this car. Um, they paid a lot of attention to detail. Um, you know, just the SDI badges everywhere, the carbon fiber trim. It, it, it's, it's a really great place to be. That being said, it should not be as comfortable as you know, a Lexus or a Cadillac or something like that. Um, and, and what a lot of people don't think about is, you know, the more of that comfort, floofy stuff that you add to your car, typically it means more weight to the car, um, which is bad for a sports car. So, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I wasn't going into this expecting to have a super luxurious interior that's silent, that doesn't have road noise and things like that, but I'm very pleasantly surprised by the interior of this car. Kind of looping back to what I said earlier, uh, call quality is usually good over the Bluetooth, but because of the the engine being so loud, um, and it is a pretty loud engine, uh, the, exa the exhaust, you know, is, is quite loud. Because of that, sometimes at highway speeds, it can be a little bit difficult to hear. Um, and that'll probably get worse when I when I uh, put custom exhaust on it, but I'm okay with that. Um, again, I, I bought this car for the thrill of driving it and, and you know, the, the enjoyment of taking corners quickly and accelerating quickly and things like that. I'm not so much worried about, about the noise. Speaking of noise, one thing about the Limited is it comes with an upgraded Harman Kardon speaker system, so, uh, stereo system rather. And so, the stereo system in this car is fantastic. I couldn't believe how good it sounds. Um, it's it's a 400 watt system, RMS of course, but it really sounds fantastic. I mean, it's it's. I had a car that had two 10 inch subs and subwoofers in the trunk uh, at one point, and this car sounds better than that. I mean, the sound is super crisp. Um, yeah, it just it sounds great. Uh, the the base model I wasn't too crazy about, but this upgraded Harman Kardon system is fantastic. Um, so if the car, if the cabin noise is bothering you, turn on the radio and you won't hear it anymore. Trust me. Back to the the drive of this vehicle, um, which unfortunately I'm not really able to demonstrate at the moment because I'm caught in traffic. However, one of the reasons that this car is so fun for me to drive is because um, it's a manual, and I'll be honest, you know, when I when I bought this car, I didn't. I mean, I understood the concepts of driving a manual. But I hadn't really done it. You know, I certainly wasn't really experienced at it, and it scared the crap out of me for the first couple of days. Um, you know, just because I didn't want to stall in the middle of the road or something like that, or you know, I was afraid of changing gears improperly, things like that. But I mean, as long as you pay attention to what you're doing, it's really not that hard. Um, you know, I was completely comfortable with it in a couple of days, um, and I would say probably after about a week and a half, I quit stalling it altogether. So. Um, the only time I ever stall it now is if I'm not paying attention. The gearbox in this, I absolutely love. Um, it feels very responsive. It's very notchy when you're when you're uh, changing gears back and forth and whatnot. There's no question in your mind when you're shifting gears in this car whether or not you're in gear uh, because it's it's very notchy. Now some of the notchiness has kind of gone away since I've owned it, but um, it's still you know there's a, there's a satisfying. Uh, sort of almost click into place and it's, it's, it's not the sound that I'm trying to describe it's, it's more the, the motion or the feeling that you get it sort of just pops into place you know and it's it's really quite satisfying when it does that uh, I can't really explain why you just have to kind of get in one and drive it to really understand but the, the gearbox on this uh, is complete it's a completely different one from the one that's in the, the base WRX uh, that one is cable driven this one's rod driven and the gear ratios are different. Now, as I've said in my previous video, I'm not really a numbers guy. Um, so no, I don't know what the gear ratios are. But I mean, that's something you could easily look up online 
to find out what they are. Um, that being said, I do know that the gears are shorter in this. First and second are really short. Third and fourth are are pretty pretty close together. Fifth is a little bit longer, and sixth is is obviously the longest gear. Okay, so on to some of the other features about this car. It's got this these different drive modes that are available here. There's a uh, there's three modes. There's intelligent. There's a uh, there's sport, and then there's sport sharp. And what these do is they mo they modify your throttle response. Intelligent is the one that you typically would use if you're just cruising down the highway. You're not really looking to make a lot of speed changes, um, or you're wanting to conserve fuel. It basically backs off the um, you know the throttle response in order to save a little bit of fuel. All right, so you've got intelligent, and then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got sport sharp, which um, gives you a lot better throttle response, uh, a lot quicker throttle response. And, um, you know, it's, it's really good for quick accelerations and things like that and, and overtaking on the highway and things like that. And, you know, the nice thing is, is you, can, you can play with it while you're driving it. That didn't come out right. You can definitely feel a difference if you put it into Sport Sharp from Intelligent Mode. Um, and you don't even have to change your, your, the position of your foot on the gas. You could just feel it, you know, sort of hunker down and, and change the throttle mapping without you even having to move your foot. Um, you know, it just, all of a sudden it just kind of gets a little bit faster. Uh, you can feel that there's a little bit more power delivery. And the other thing is, is I'm not 100% sure about this, but I feel like intelligent mode sort of limits how much boost you're able to obtain. Um, again, to try and conserve fuel. It tries to, to keep you on the lower end of the boost spectrum. And if you're in Sport Sharp, you know, it completely unlocks everything. Um, and then the reason I left Sport to last is because I feel like it's kind of halfway in between Intelligent and Sport Sharp. Um, to be honest, I don't really use Sport that much. Um, I really just use either Intelligent or Sport Sharp. Um, to me, it's, you know, if you're going to be doing accelerations and things like that, you want it in Sport Sharp. You wouldn't want to use the middle ground mode. Uh, so the, that feature is really cool. I really like that. Um, and the other thing that uh, the STI has that that the base WRX does not have is the uh, the adjustable center differential, which also operates a little bit differently um, than the one that the, the WRX has. But um, this one's, from, from my understanding and the research that I've done, this one's beefier, but it's also adjustable. So um, what that means is you can basically you can adjust how much how much power is sent to the front versus the back, or you can lock it all together and send the same power all the time. Um, so the reason you'd want to ever do that would be, um, for instance, if you're on the track, you'd want to send more power to the back tires. If you're in really rainy conditions like I am now, you might want to adjust it to send more power to the front tires because it's, it's easier to maintain control that way and grip. Um, if you're off-road, and only if you're off-road, would you ever want to lock the uh, the differential? That being said, this does have an auto mode. Um, so there's an auto and a manual here. There's an auto mode that basically takes care of it for you. So um, that auto mode has got, you've basically you've got auto in the center and then you've got an auto minus and an auto plus. Um, auto minus sends more power to the back tires. Auto plus sends more power to the front tires. And it basically allows the computer to manage how much power is being sent uh, to the front and the back based on what you're currently doing. So if it feels like it's losing traction, it tries to adjust that a little bit. Whereas if you go into the manual mode, it doesn't do that as much. Um, it's still going to do it, but it doesn't, it doesn't have um, as tight a rein over it. That being said, if you were to lock your differential and just drive around and lock different, you know, in lock mode all the time, you're probably going to throw it. Um, you're probably going to throw your your center diff. Um, you're going to wear it out in very little time. So, um, you know, if you don't really know what you're doing with it, I would say that you should definitely just leave it in auto and just use the auto plus or the auto minus. Um, don't ever lock it. Uh, WRX has a smaller turbo than this one does, and that means two things. Um, 
for one, the WRX turbo kicks in sooner. Um, you know, it's able to spool up a lot quicker, and so you get that boost at, at a lower end. So, um, the one that I test drove, I felt like the boost really started kicking in around, around 2200 to 2500 RPM. Whereas in this car, uh, since it's got a larger turbo, it takes a little bit more time to speed up. And, you know, it starts kicking in, I want to say around 3500. Um, and then once you, once you hit 4000 RPM in this car, it just becomes a rocket and just takes off. Um, whereas once you get really past about 5000 RPM in the WRX, it, it, it almost falls flat. I mean, it, it tapers off pretty sharply and you can feel it. Um, so it's, it's two completely different driving styles. Uh, a lot of people like the, the smaller turbo in the WRX because they feel like they're in boost more often and they feel like there's a, a little bit quicker of an acceleration uh, potential there because of that. Um, and they, they feel like it's a lot more fun to drive around town because of that. And I have to agree that it's, it is very fun to drive and be in boost at, at, at lower RPM. But I guess I'm a little bit old school in terms of the way I prefer turbocharged engines. I kind of like the boost kicking in at a higher RPM because I don't necessarily always want boost when I'm just driving around town. And that's more of a preference thing. Um, I'm not saying one is better than the other or anything like that because they're both different. It's apples and oranges, they're different. But what I am saying is my preference is to not necessarily be in boost unless I am really doing a, you know, let's say a hard acceleration or something like that. All right, so for instance, uh, I am at, I am doing 55 miles an hour right now in sixth gear. Um, and I'm about... 2200 RPM and you know I would not want boost to be kicking in at such a low RPM um, you know especially if I'm just cruising along like I'm doing now you know for instance traffic is really heavy here and I wouldn't want to necessarily be constantly boosting while I'm in traffic again it's just a preference of mine um, you know some people may want that so, you know, it's, it's great that, that Subaru's got the different options available for that. That being said, I have a feeling that at some point, Subaru is probably going to, to discontinue the EJ engine at some point. Um, which I'm sure, you know, a lot of people will be happy about. That also means that basically Subarus will never sound like, in my opinion, Subarus, uh, you know, from that point forward. For me, exhaust note is important and the WRX just kind of sounds a little bit too generic for me. It doesn't have that unique sound that I love so much from the Subaru. And yes, I, I realize the performance implications, but I still feel like that sound is what originally attracted me to the car. Without that, the car is still fun, but you know, it just it loses something, I, I feel. All right, guys, that pretty much concludes my review of this car, the 2016 Subaru WRX STI Limited. Um, if you like this review and you want me to do more, please, uh, you know, hit the like button down there uh, below the video. And, uh, you know, please subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be doing a lot more uh, of these reviews and, uh, and, and vlogs. And, and... All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.